Hello everyone! Welcome to the afternoon session of the webinar series brought to you by CHED Regional Office 1 here at the third floor of our office in the city of San Fernando, La Union. Ako po si May Rose, nagbabalik po ulit. I hope you are all safe and okay from the strong earthquake that we felt a while back. Naramdaman po ba ninyo sa inyong mga lugar? Our first speaker this afternoon will be sharing about common gender issues during the COVID-19 outbreak. We are honored to have with us the Attorney 5 of the Commission on Human Rights Region 1. Her present designations at CHR Region 1 include the following. She is the head of the legal division. She is also the executive committee or she is also uh, an executive committee member of the Gender Focal Point System, a focal person for gender equality and women's human rights, and head of the Secretariat Regional Gender and Development Committee 1. She is also the primary representative of CHR RO1 in the following interagency groups. The Region 1 advocates for gender equality, the Regional Interagency Committee on Anti-Trafficking and Child Pornography, the Regional Population and Advisory Board, and the Regional Development Council 1. She is a graduate of AB Polsai from St. Louis College with honors and Bachelor of Laws from the University of Cord Cordilleras, Baguio City, and passed the board examinations in 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Attorney Ana Leia T. Romero. Hi, Attorney Ana. Attorney Ana, I'm here in the connection house with a straw. So, ito po sa Ana. Hi. Hi. Yes, hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you. Very apt, timely in this time of global pandemic. So, without further ado, let us know the presentation of according Anna. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone, especially to all the viewers and listeners of today's webinar series. So in behalf of the Commission on Human Rights Region 1, I would like to thank the Commission on Higher Education Region 1 for this opportunity. And of course, congratulations for coming up with this webinar series, which is very timely and relevant nowadays, especially that we are in the middle of a pandemic. Every time nga po na nakikita ko yung hashtag ng CHED na we learn as one, um, hindi ko mapigilang hindi mapangiti kasi it reminds me that life is indeed a continuous a learning process that it is always an opportunity to learn, relearn, and unlearn. So this afternoon, I was given the task to discuss the different gender issues during the COVID-19. But I would like to emphasize that these gender issues, nag exist na sila even Sean, I would like that the participants will be able to learn something. And of course, for the participants to be able to realize that indeed gender issues exist and how can they be able to, how can they be able to, what can they do to lessen, if not to stop, these gender issues. So for the outline of my presentation, they are as follows. So there's a need for us to review first the key concepts on gender and development, and then we will discuss the dip different gender issues. And of course, I will also discuss some of the role of CHR as the gender ombud during COVID-19. As an intervention for all, the Commission on Human Rights po kasi is designated under Republic Act 9710 or the Magna Carta of Women as the gender of good. So for our review of key concepts on God, there are four main premises that I would like to emphasize. The first one is that 
when we speak of God, it is not a war of the sexes. So, hindi po uso dito yung sinasabi that women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Of course, God is also not anti-male and both women and men are victims, although women more than men. So, kailan ba kasi nagiging biktima din ang kalalakihan? Di ba? For example, they're also a victim of gender stereotype. Like for example, pag may mga lectures po kami, lagi po nilang sinasabi na paano naman daw yung mga kalalakihan. Kasi pag sila daw, binububog din sila, um, sinasaktan din daw sila ng kanilang mga asawa. But every time we ask them kung sila ba ay nagpa-blatter or nireport ba nila yung sinasabi nila na ginawa sa kanila, they will answer no. Kasi daw, ano po ang usual na sagot po nila? Ang usual na sagot nila is nakakahiya daw or because of the macho image. So in a way, they are also victim of gender stereotype na yun nga. As a lalaki, sila ay dapat na tigasin. Ayan. Pag sila naman ay nasa bahay, like gumagawa ng household works, or sila ang naiwan sa bahay, taga ano po ang usual na naiisip din na ibang tao. Di ba ang iniisip din sa kanila ay sila ay ano po? under desire or undress desire, di po ba? So in a way, they are also uh, victims of stereotype. However, base po kasi sa statistics po natin, more pa rin ang kababaihan na mas prone sa abuse, violence, and discrimination. And of course, the last one is that both have a stake in the struggle for gender equality na tinatawag po natin. And what is gender equality? So, pag sinabi po natin gender equality, this is the equal participation of women and men in decision making, the equal ability to exercise their human rights, and their equal access to and on control of resources and the benefits of development, and of course, their equal access to employment. Iba naman po ito sa tinatawag natin gender equity because pag sinabi po naman natin gender equity, this, is, this means fairness and impartiality in the treatment of women and men in terms of their rights, benefits, obligations, and opportunities. So pag sinabi po natin gender equity, it recognizes that men and women have different needs and may require different treatment. So ang very example po nito, for example, sa promotion sa isang opisina, there is gender equality if both women and men employees can buy for a position for a promotion. So there's equality there. However, masasabi natin na there is gender equity if yung office na yun, it recognizes that the men employee and the we, women employee na nagbabay for the promotion ay may different na pangangailangan. For example, if that women employee is a breastfeeding mother, so meron bang breastfeeding room sa office, meron ba siyang chair na applicable sa kanyang mga sa kanyang maternal function. So ganun po ang sinasabi natin na gender equity naman. So the basic illustration is this one. Masasabi po natin that there is gender equality and kasi pantay on the first slide, on the first picture I should say, there is equality kasi pare-pareho silang may tuntungan. But on the other picture, masasabi natin that that this is the time na merong gender equity or may equity or justice na tinatawag natin. Kasi na-recognize na merong mas pangangailangan yung isa kasi nga mas maliit siya. And then yung isa naman ay nasa middle yung height niya. So yung isa hindi na siya binigyan ng tungtungan kasi siya ay matangkad na. So the second illustration demonstrates that treating everyone as equal does that lead always to equity or justice na tinatawag natin. Pag pinag-uusapan din natin ang gender and development, there are three major gender perspectives and practices and they are as follows. So una po dyan yung tinatawag po natin biological determinism. And then number two, we have the sex and gender divide. And of course, letter C is the critic of the sex and gender divide, which introduces the concepts of the gender bred person or yung sochi na tinatawag natin. For biological determinism, this is the thinking that females and males, specific biological traits determine and or limit their future. So ang sinasabi lang po dito, yung nangyayari sa babae at sa lalaki ay compelled solely by their biology. 
So it's usually led to gender stereotypes between women and men, double standards between women and men, male bias and discrimination of women, and the exclusion of women, which are all examples of gender issues na tinatawag natin. For example po kasi, pag yung batang lalaki at batang babae, di po ba usually uh, nagiging biktima na sila ng gender stereotype kasi pag yung batang babae, dapat blue ang dapat pink ang gamit. Pag yung batang lalaki naman, dapat blue ang gamit. Pag yung batang lalaki, lang laging sinasabi usually sa kanya ng magulang, dapat ang laruin mo ay baril-barilan. Pag babae naman, di ba, dapat dollhouse, dapat, di ba, Barbie dolls ang laruan. Pag yung batang lalaki, ang sinasabi sa kanya, pag laki mo, dapat magpulis, batang bab or magsundalo, magdoktor, ganyan. Pag yung batang babae naman, ang sinasabi po ay ano po, dapat maging teacher, maging nurse, di ba? Where's sinasabi ng iba, huwag nang mag-aral kasi magpapakasal din lang naman in the future. Okay, so next po, we have the sex and gender divide. So just discuss what is sex, what is gender. So are they the same? Okay, so the answer is no. Kasi pag sinabi po natin sex, of course, this is the physical differences between men and women. So it, pag sinabi po natin sex, this is the genetic and physical or biological identity of a person which indicates whether one is a male or female. So this usually refers to biologically determined differences between men and women. For example, with respect to reproductive system, of course, pag sa babae, we have the ovary, the uterus, the fallopian tube. Pag sa kalalakihan naman, anong meron sa kanila? Of course, uh, scrotum, testes, and the like. Pag external reproductive organs, of course, for the women, we have the vagina, and for the male, we have the penis. Pag sa hormones naman, magkaiba din, because for women, ano ang hormones na meron sila? They have the estrogen and the progesterone. Pag sa lalaki naman, they have the hormones of testosterone. Pag sa chromosomes, magkaiba din kasi pag sa babae, we have XX and pag sa lalaki, we have the XY na tinatawag natin. XY chromosomes. Okay. So pag sinabi natin sex, this is a person is usually born male or female. So this is constant and alterable. It is natural and cannot be changed. And of course, it is universal. On the other hand, pag sinabi po natin gender, this is culturally determined. So it refers to the cultural, socially differentiated roles and characteristics attributed by a given culture to women and men. So pag sa gender naman, sinasabi po natin na ito ay changeable. It is learned through social socialization na ano po ba yung mga agents of socialization. Of course, we have the family. We have the school, we have the church, and of course, the community. And of course, the gender differences are imposed through the different roles na ginagampanan ng babae at lalaki. For example, ang productive is usually sa kalalakihan, productive or paid work. And the reproductive role or the domestic role is usually napupunta sa kababaihan. Of course, it is also imposed in the different roles, responsibilities, and resources na naiyaatang sa kanila. So in summary, sinasabi po natin na sex is what you were born with while gender is what you have become. So the third perspective is the critic of the sex and gender divide, which means that gender is not necessarily binary. So not necessarily either or and sex can be changed through appropriate technology. So it is promotes respect for diversity through the inclusion and acceptance of all. It also introduces new concepts, yung tinatawag nga po natin, SOGI. So ano nga po ba tong SOGI na tinatawag po natin? So SOGI stands for Sexual Orientation, Gender Identity, and Expressions. So sa screen po natin, makikita po natin na there's a picture of a doctor. And by just looking at his picture, masasabi po ba natin na ang doctor na ito ay matalino? Na siya ay isang professional? Na siya ay isang healer? Na siya ay macho? 
or na siya ay mapagkakatiwalaan. By just taking a look at his picture. Next picture, we have Stephen Curry. So by just taking a look at the picture of Stephen Curry, masasabi po ba natin na siya ay macho? Na siya ay isang ideal man? Na siya ay athlete of the year? Na siya ay isang sportsman? Na siya ay idol ng kabataan? By just taking a look at his picture. Next picture, we have Miss Katrona Gray. So by taking a look at her picture, masasabi ba natin na siya ay babaeng babae? Na siya ay feminine? Na siya ay ideal woman? Na siya ay idol ng kababaihan? Of course, next picture, masasabi ba natin na siya ay isang happy mother? Na siya ay may happy family? Na siya ay fulfilled? Na siya ay isang caring mother? By just taking a look at the picture. So paano kung si Dr. at si Katrona Gray ay in a relationship? Possess pa ba nila yung individual characteristics na meron sila? So si Dr. ba ay professional pa rin? Si Katrona Gray ba ay babaeng babae pa rin at idol ng mga kababaihan? How about si Stephen Curry at si Mother? Ang in our relationship, masasabi ba natin that Stephen Curry ay macho pa rin, na siya ay idol pa rin ng kabataan? At yung picture naman ni Mother ay makasasabi na natin na happy family siya, na siya ay caring mother, na siya ay fulfilled pa rin, na siya ay isang happy mother? Paano naman kung si Katrona Gray at si Mother ang in our relationship? Masasabi ba natin that they still possess their individual characteristics na sinabi natin kanina? Si Katrona Gray ba ay masasabi pa rin na babaeng babae kung ang karelasyon niya ay isang karelasyon niya si mother? Masasabi ba natin siya na isang feminine pa rin or ideal woman pag ang karelationship niya ay si mother? At si mother, masasabi ba natin na happy family siya? Na siya ay isang happy mother? Na siya ay fulfilled? Kung siya ay in a relationship with Miss Katrona Gray. Next picture, paano naman kung si Dr. at si Stephen Curry ang in a relationship? Masasabi po ba natin that they still possess their individual characteristics? Masasabi po ba natin na si Dr. ay matalino pa rin? Na siya ay professional pa rin? Na siya ay isang healer pa rin? na siya ay mapagkakatiwalaan pa rin. On the other hand, masasabi po ba natin na si Stephen Curry ay macho pa rin, na siya ay isang athlete of the year, ideal man, sportsman, at idol ng kabataan pa rin kung siya ay in a relationship kay doktor. So lahat po ng mga sagot natin, while well, just taking a look, a look at the picture, na hindi natin kilala kung sino personal yung mga taong ito, is are all ready, tinatawag natin, pwede nang mag-create ng gender issue kasi we tend to gender stereotype na tayo. Kasi pag sinabi po natin Soji, ayan, pinapakilala ko po sa inyo, si gender-bred person. So kailangan po kasi natin maintindihan si gender-bred person kasi minsan yung mga gender issues din nagmumula sa mga people with diverse Soji na tinatawag natin. Sila din yung isang nakakaranas ng gender issue na discrimination. So ano ba kasi yung Sochi? Ang gusto ko lang pong i-emphasize, lahat po ng tao ay may Sochi or sexual orientation, gender identity and expressions, and lahat po ng Sochi ay normal. And of course, we need to respect kung ano man po ang Sochi ng bawat isa sa atin. So pag sinabi po natin si gender bred person, ayan, pag sinabi po kasi natin Sochi, pinag-usapan po yung sex, ito po yung sinabi natin kanina na it is universal. So, it is constant and unalterable. So, pinanganak ka either female or male ka lang. Ngayon, yung nasa gitna po sa picture na intersex, this occurs kasi kapag yung um, kapag dalawa or yung external reproductive organ ay hindi siya nagpuli develop. So, hindi sigurado kung female or male. Pero, mas marami din yung, yung sa hormones yung kalalaman kung lalaki pa siya talaga or babae. Ang example po natin dito ay si Nancy Nabalta, kung kayo po ay familiar. Siya po ay very sikat na runner po noon. 
And, pero later on, parang na-disqualify po siya. Kasi it turned out po na mas marami ang kanyang male hormones. So, siya pala ay may, may kakategory natin na lalaki. So, ang case po niya ay siya po ay isang intersex. Ang gender identity naman ng isang tao, ito yung tingin ng tao sa kanyang sarili which does not necessarily correspond to his or her sex at birth. So, may mga tao po kasi na pinanganak na babae pero ang tingin po nila or pagkakakilala nila sa sarili nila ay lalaki sila. Or meron din namang pinanganak na babae pero ang tingin po sa sarili nila ay sila po ay lalaki. So, dito po pumapasok yung mga concept ng transgender, yung trans man or trans woman na tinatawag po natin. So, yung gender care naman, hindi niya ina-identify yung sarili niya kung woman siya or kung man siya. Ngayon, ano naman po yung sexual orientation na tinatawag po natin? So, nakaturo po siya sa puso dito sa picture. Kasi pag sinabi po natin sexual orientation, ito po yung kanino ka ba na-attract. So, it, you can either be heterosexual if na-attract ka sa iyong opposite sex, bisexual kung na-attract ka sa both, sa babae or sa lalaki. And of course, you are a homosexual kung na-attract ka naman sa kapwa same-sex mo na tinatawag natin. And of course, we have the gender expression na tinatawag natin. So, sa gender-bred person po ay nakaturo siya sa kamay kasi pag sinabi po natin gender expression, this is how you carry out your gender role. So, you can kung paano ka kumilos, kung paano ka magsalita, kung paano ka manamit. So, you can either be feminine, masculine, or both, na tinatawag naman natin androgynous. So, ito po yung Tagalog version niya. So, kapag sex, sinabi natin kasarian, male, female, or intersex. So, wala kang choice. It is universal. Hindi siya pwedeng mabago. Gender expression, paano mo pinapakita ang iyong gender role. So, you can be feminine, masculine, or androgynous. Gender identity, kung ano ang tingin mo sa sarili mo which does not necessarily correspond to your sex at birth. And of course, sexual orientation, kanino ka na-attract? So basically, those are the three gender perspectives that we need to understand na meron mga pagkakaiba ang babae at ang mga lalaki. And of course, we also have those people with diverse soji na tinatawag natin. And now the next topic will be about the gender issues. So what are gender and development or yung God issues na po na sinasabi po natin? So these are usually the problems and concerns na that emerge from using gender as a basis for assigning roles, functions, and responsibilities, resources, and entitlements to individuals. So usually po, yung gender roles, expectations, and perceptions, they usually box women in the situations that constrain their capacity to do and to be. So how God issues are identified? So usually po, they are identified through gender statistics. Through gender statistics, nakikita natin kasi yung difference or yung pagkakaiba ng male at female with respect to the different aspects of life, with respect to employment, with respect to work, with respect to income, and the like. Of course, you also have the use of frameworks and the use of previous studies and researches. What are examples of these gender issues na nag-exist na even prior to this pandemic? So, una po dyan is yung pinatawag po natin stereotyping, which is making assumptions between men and women on what they want, can, should do, or should be. Ito na po yung mga examples ko kanina na pag pinanganak na babae, sasabihan ka na dapat paglaki mo, maging teacher ka, maging beauty queen, gumamit ka ng pampaganda. Pag lalaki ka naman na pinanganap, usually may expectations na na kapag lalaki, siya ang, ang laruan niya dapat ay barin-barilan, na dapat pag laki niya siya ay magiging sundalo, maging, maging pulis, and the like. So, that is what we call stereotyping. Next, we have political subordination which means that positions of power and leadership in the home, in the community, in the workplace, and in society are generally occupied by men. And usually, makikita po natin that women holding positions from the national 
down to the local levels are in the minority. Example na lang po natin ngayon sa House of Senate po natin, we only have six senators out of the 24 sitting senators. So makikita po natin talaga na merong discrepancy as to the number and as to the representation with respect sa political. Okay. Next, we have marginalization or the treatment of a person or group as insignificant or peripheral. Of course, we also have unjust oppression, which is the unjust treatment or control, denying persons meaningful human or civil rights in the systematic control over a person or group. Of course, meron din po tayong tinatawag na exploitation, which is the action of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work. So dito po pumapasok yung mga child exploitation, sexual exploitation, and labor exploitation na tinatawag po natin. And last time, if I if my memory serves me right, parang nalungkot po ako kasi ang parang sinasabi po dun sa news na nabasa ko, ang Pilipinas na ang may pinakaram, pinakamaraming kaso ng online sexual violence na tinatawag po natin. So next, we have the multiple burden of women. Ayan. Sa picture, sinasabi ko, one heart, many rules. So ano ba yung tinatawag natin multiple burden of women? So this refers to the increasing duties and responsibilities that women are expected to take on without similar expected effort from men. So makikita po natin, minsan po kasi ang mga kababaihan, di ba? Hindi lang sila nanay, sila ay isang working mom din, so nagtatrabaho. Sila ay also kapatid kaibigan, anak sa kanilang mga magulang. So, they play multiple roles but only one heart, sabi nga po sa ating caption. Of course, we also have incidents of violence against women and other gender-based violence na tinatawag po natin. So, pag sinabi po natin gender-based gender violence, ito po ay anumang akto ng karahasan laban sa isang tao dahil sa kanilang kasyarian. So, tinatawag din itong sexual at gender-based violence ng United Nations High Commission of Human Rights na tumutukoy sa anumang akto ng karahasan na ginagawa laban sa isang tao dahil sa umiiral na gender norms o usapin ng kung ano ang natural pagdating sa kanasarian at di pantay-pantay na kapangyarihan. So, worldwide, based po sa UN Women, sinasabi po dyan na one in three women have experienced physical or sexual violence mostly by their intimate partner, and approximately 15 million adolescent girls worldwide have experienced forced sex at some point in their life. Of course, sa Pilipinas or in the Philippines, sinasabi po based sa National Demographic Health Survey in the year 2019 that one in four married women experienced spousal violence, may be physical, sexual, emotional or economic by a current or most recent husband or partner, only one-third of those who experienced physical or sexual violence sought help and 41% never sought help or told anyone. So dito kasi pumapasok minsan yung trust issues. Kanino ba kami pwedeng lumapit? Kanino ba akong magra-report? So pumapasok din yung economic aspects kasi kung makukulong yung asawa, paano na yung mga anak? Paano yung pag-aaral nila? Paano yung ikabubuhay nila. So 11% of women agree that the husband is justified in beating his wife for any of the following reasons. So neglects children, goes out without telling him, argues with him, refuses sexual intercourse, or burns food. So sinasabi din po dito that 8 out of 10 LGBT children are physically and psychologically abused based sa ating data. Based po sa reports ng PNPWCPC as of April 14, 2020, as to the GBB against women um, before and during the enhanced community quarantine, na naipatupad nga po dahil nagkaroon na nga po ng pandemic. So, makikita po natin that nagkaroon ng mababa ang reporting. So, yung rape, na, rape cases natin from 144 noong February 14 to March 14, to March 14 to April 14, naging 63 siya. So makikita po natin na yung mga ibang gender-based violence na reported ay bumaba. So while mababa ang reporting, uh, this is usually expected because of the mobility constraints and the many barriers po ngayon. Siyempre dahil po lockdown, maraming sarado, uh, walang public transportation, 
maraming saradong opisina. So, hindi nila alam kung paano sila magre-report, kung kanino sila lalapit, hihingi ng tulong. So, it does not mean na kung bumaba yung reported cases ay bumaba na rin yung gender-based violence ngayong may pandemic. Of course, the same uh, situation uh, with respect to GBB reports against children before ensuring the enhanced community quarantine. So makikita din po natin na mababa din po ang reporting. Pero gaya nga ng sabi ko po kanina, this is expected because of the mobility constraints and the many barriers ngayon na nararanasan ng mga biktima. Of course, the same goes through with the breakdown of reported cases of PAUSI per month based on the record of 23 WCPUs nationwide. Of course, we also have the issue of discrimination, which is the prejudicial treatment against a person or group considered as different from a larger group or more powerful group. And this is also the unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people, especially on grounds of race, age, sex, or gender. So other issues during COVID-19, of course, Nandiyan po yung discrimination against healthcare workers and other frontliners. Discrimination na nararanasan ng mga people confirm positive of COVID-19 as well as those people found to be suspected or probable. Of course, nandiyan din po yung discrimination against people with diverse SOGI who are ECQ violators. Like for example po dun sa Region 9 sa Sambuanga, wherein people with diverse SOGI, uh, they are ECQ violators and then they are, ginupitan po sila uh, without their consent. Yun po yung parang ginawang punishment sa kanila. And of course, in Central Luzon, naging viral din po yung nangyari sa mga LGBT na nag-violate ng ECQ, ECQ, ECQ rules and regulations nila. And ang ginawa naman pong parusa ay pinagawa sila ng malalaswang gawain at pinagsayaw pa yata sila at binidyo po sila. Of course, other issues include accessibility of information on government support programs. So, nagkaroon po ng problema sa sub-distribution, if you are aware of that, diba? Of who can avail, who are exempted, where to apply, where to file complaints or ask clarification. So, yun po yung mga ibang issue na nag-come up. Of course, gender impacts on health and education. Sa education, lalo na kung ano ba ang mangyayari talaga, mag-resume ba ang klase ba yun. August 24 or hindi. So, may mga factors na kinukonsider kasi may mga nagsasabi na habang wala pang vaccine, hindi pa dapat magkaroon ng klase. But of course, there are also alternative ways para hindi pa rin mag-suffer yung right to education ng mga tao, especially ng mga bata. Of course, we have the gender impacts on employment, multiple burdens of women and girls due to ECQ, the absence of limited availability of hygiene and menstrual treats and relief. Of course, the limited or absence of social protection for women, PWDs, IPs, and LGBTI families. And of course, the limited or absence of maternal and infant health care during COVID-19. So, may news pa po dati na namatay sa hospital or namatay yung mga anak kasi hindi siya nakapagpacheck up. Other issues include gaps and breakdown of referral pathways, some instances of refusal to receive or process complaints, and of course, the multiple burden na nararanasan po na ating first responders, na mga barangay baudes officers po natin, like mga CSWDO natin, mga MSWDO natin, kasi bilang first responders sila, meron din po silang obligation sa kanilang sariling pamilya. So we also have other issues include lockdown of local shelters and absence of alternatives. We also have mobility of constraints, especially those in the GIDA or rural women. Pag sinami po natin GIDA, these are the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas or yung mga far-flung areas po na tinatawag po natin. And of course, malagi, marami din po issue on illegal arrest or inhumane treatment to ECQ violators po natin. So basically, these are the examples of gender issues even prior to COVID-19 and during the COVID-19. So we, on, the part, on our part, we recognize the efforts of the government para 
magkaroon ng solusyon yung pandemic na nararanasan natin ngayon. However, we recommend that they use gender lens in coming up with their programs and projects para makita that women, men, and persons with diverse sochi, bata, matanda, IPs, PWDs, and the like, these vulnerable sectors of the society, may iba-iba po silang pangangailangan, especially during this time of pandemic. So, magkakaibang pangangailangan, magkakaibang treatment supposed to be, and sana ma-ensure that no one is left behind. So, basically, yun po yung gender issues natin. Now, gusto ko lang po i-discuss din yung role ng CHR as the gender ombud. This will be the last part of my presentation. Of course, ano nga po ba ang mandate ng CHR? Of course, we have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which states that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and in rights. Of course, we also have the 1987 Philippine Constitution, Article 2, Section 2, and of course, the Yogya Carta Principles, that all human beings of all sexual orientations and gender identities are entitled to the full enjoyment of all human rights. So under the Magna Carta of Women po kasi, the Commission on Human Rights is designated as the gender ombud. So ano nga po ba ang role ng CHR as the gender ombud? Of course, we advocate for the promotion and protection of women's human rights. Of course, we investigate violations thereof. We monitor compliance. And of course, we recommend appropriate measures to the Civil Service Commission or to the concerned department of the government for its effective implementation. So even the time of COVID or during this pandemic, as gender ombud, we exercise our role on with respect to our mandate. We exercise human rights protection with respect uh, with our legal assistance or e-lawyering services. Of course, we also have our human rights advocacy and promotion by issuing different um, IEC on human rights during COVID and conducting webinars and also live streaming in social media. Of course, we also have human rights policy adv advisory works which concerns advisories to government agencies on human rights in relation to COVID, and of course, statements focusing on the protection of the most vulnerable sectors of the society. So ito po yung mga ibang programs ng CHR, wherein you can report the GBB and BAUSI hotlines during quarantine. They are flash on your screen. Of course, we have the Pangol Karapatan or e-lawyering. And we also have this e-report sa Gender Ombud, which is the online platform na inintroduce ko ng CHR for the reporting and monitoring and response to the gender-based violence during enhanced community quarantine in the Philippines. So dito po, you can visit our link. You can go to www.gbbcovid.report and makikita nyo po doon yung dashboard, GBB dashboard. So who can report in this online platform? We have una po dyan yung victim survivor of gender-based violence. Of course, any person or organization who has knowledge of the incident. And of course, any CHR staff in the regional office. So click, click lang po siya. Makikita nyo po doon nyo po ano po yung pagpipilian nyo na acts of gender-based violence. You just have to click what particular violence has been committed. And of course, you can also report po sa aming opisina. And if kayo po ay merong katanungan, hindi nyo po alam kung kanino po kayo lalapit. Ang opisina po namin ay open. You can just write to our office po and address it to our regional director, Attorney Harold D. Aron. Our new address is at Government Center 2, Aguila Road, Capitol Hill, Sibilia, San Fernando City. La Union, tell
Thank you po. Ay, ibalik ko. <laughs> so basically, that's the end of my presentation and I would like to leave you with a cup of coffee. Ayan, tamang-tama sa malamig na panahon. And with the saying, everything will be okay. Maybe not today, but eventually tomorrow. So we just have to do also our part and together we can heal as one. Sabi nga po ni Mother Teresa, di ba? Uh, I can do things which you cannot. You can do things which I cannot. But together, we can do great things. So, sa pamamagitan po ng pagtutulungan, um, all this, um, this pandemic will also end soon with God's help, of course. So, that's all po and thank you. Sotor ni Ana, maraming salamat din po sa kape. Sotor has raised awareness about the gender impacts the COVID-19 is having on our state. We are truly grateful for highlighting even men in this pandemic. Okay, so behind for questions now, are we ready for the questions? Okay. So we'll wait. And subscribe to our account. That is Chair Office One. We'd like also to encourage you to share the webinar with your social networks. You can view the social below your screen. Okay, so. Can we have the authority? Okay, so this is to prevent the inequalities. What preventive should be implemented or be done before? Since both it is a great opportunity to communication with this topic. Yes, so thank you for that question, uh, Jan, Jan Paul. Okay. As a preventive measure, of course, sinasabi nga natin that um, There must be an open communication between the unang una gender should be a communication within the family. Of course, um, dun sa mga bata na nakakaranas ng abuse, they should be they should be open. They should they should come out in the open so that para matulungan sila. And of course, we can also help by conducting. Um, info dissemination kasi nga minsan lack of knowledge is dangerous kasi minsan hindi hindi alam na violation na pala yung ginagawa sa kanila na meron pala silang pwedeng mga takuhan so in these times um, it's nice to know na kung ano yung meron pa kung sino yung pwedeng nating matakbuhan kung sino yung pwedeng nating matulungan pero ang pinaka the best solution since nasa bahay, nasa bahay lang tayo during this time, ang pinaka the best is communication pa rin, open communication between the family and the child. So for example, uh, with respect sa isang LGBTI child, for example, na gustong hindi niya alam kung paano kakausapin yung parents niya or ano, siguro this is a time for them to to talk kasi syempre nasa bahay lang. So open communication is yung pinaka-preventive um, measure natin kasi sinasabi nga natin na walang mga bagay na hindi nadadaan sa mabuting usapan. And sometimes yung differences kasi natin, it usually uh, does not come with, with the differences per se, but it is in our inability to accept, recognize, and celebrate those differences natin. Thank you, attorney. Our next question comes from Mr. George Gorby Rubio. Are there any uses to And what are your thoughts on this? Okay. So thank you, Sir George, for that question. 
Unfortunately, we have no recorded data on abuses towards men right now. Kaya nga, uh, as I mentioned uh, in my introduction kanina, when we respect to God, uh, our gender and development lectures, may mga nagsasabi kasi na pag sinabi natin God, it's all about women's rights, uh, about kaming mga kalalakihan. So somehow, they are victim already of stereotype kasi nga yung macho image, sometimes yun yung nagpe-prevent sa kanila to come out in the open na sila din ay na-abuse or sila din ay na-abuso. So minsan, may mga uh, seminars and lectures na kaming nakuunahan and then may mga kalalakihan na nagsaside comment na paano naman kaming mga kalalakihan, paano yung mga rights namin? Uh, paano, paano kami, nabubukbuk din kami. Pas, pag tinatanong po namin kung nag-blatter po ba sila, because our laws are based on statistics. So, usually kung wala pong blatter yan, yung incident na yan, o yung pangyayari na yan, na kayo ay biktima rin ng pangaabuso, paano po maisusulong yan as a patas? So, based po kasi sa present statistics po natin, mas prone po talaga ang kababaihan when it comes to discrimination and abuse. Kaya po, usually yung mga loss na naipapasa ay sinasabi nga po natin na para sa bakit parang panay lagi para sa kababaihan. But on my thoughts on this is that we cannot deny, siguro there are also men who are really abused, pero yun nga, uh, the, the cases are not reported. Um, pero yun nga po, with respect sa God kasi, hindi natin sinasabi na dapat mas maging superior ang mga kababaihan. We want men to be the partners of women para ma-achieve nga po natin yung tinatawag po natin gender equality. Okay, thank you po. Thank you, attorney. Our next question. For our next question, okay, so for our next question, hello po, good afternoon, this is from Chester Policarpio. May I just ask kung may mga laws po tayo that protects men's rights po since nabanggit po ang VAUSI and Magna Carta for Women. Thanks, attorney. <laughs> Of course, meron po. So, hindi lang po um, mga babae ang may karapatan or may mga batas para sa uh, mga babae lang. Say, for example, we have our Philippine Constitution, the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Yun po ay, ang batas po na yun, yung mga content po ng batas na yun ay para sa lahat. So, wala po nga sinasabi doon na yung Constitution po natin ay para sa mga babae lamang. So, para din po rin sa kalalakihan. For example po dyan, uh, no one shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So, yun po yung nasa Bill of Rights po natin uh, sa Article 1. So, yun, nag-apply po yun sa lahat without uh, without discrimination. So, default law din po natin, we have the revised penal code na pwede po sa babae at sa lalaki. So, for example po, yung mga kalalakihan, for example, yung mga nagsasabi na sila din po ay sinaktan ng kanilang asawa, so, pwede po silang mag-file din ng reklamo. Ano pong batas ang gagamitin? Of course, we have the revised penal code. Pwede po silang mag-file ng physical injuries, attempt and homicide, or depende po sa circumstances kung ano yung pwedeng ma-file. So, mas, of course, we also have, aside sa domestic laws na yun, ang ating constitution at ang ating RPC or revised penal code, of course, we also have international instruments like the UDHR or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Kasi ang sinasabi po doon, doon, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. So regardless of your sex, of your gender, regardless of your sexual orientation, gender identity expressions, applicable po siya. So yun lang po. Okay, thank you po, Attorney Anna. And that was our last question. Again, thank you for the very informative and enlightening sharing about common gender issues during the COVID-19 outbreak. Do you have any concluding message, Attorney? Yes, po. so in behalf of the Commission on Human Rights Region 1, Gusto ko lang po ulit magpasalamat sa Commission on Higher Education Region 1 for their for this opportunity po na makapag-share po sa inyo ngayong hapon. 
And I hope kahit paano ay may naiwan po ako sa inyong lesson or aral po ngayong hapon na ito. And of course, congratulations Ched Region 1 again for coming up with this webinar series which is very timely and relevant nowadays. Especially na tayo pong lahat ngayon ay nasa gitna po ng pandemic. So, yun lang po and once again, thank you so much po. Thank you also, Attorney, to the Commission on Human Rights Regional Office 1. And of course, it was our pleasure to have, we, to have you with us this afternoon. To our participants, I hope that the sharing of uh, Attorney Anna will ensure that the gender perspective is not forgotten when it comes to making important decisions or policies inside your classrooms or in your higher education institutions during and after the pandemic. Okay, so may we invite you all again to like our FB page and to subscribe to your to our YouTube account. And also, we'd like to encourage you to share today's webinar with your social networks. You can use the uh, social sharing icons below your screen. Okay, so we are down to our last session or topic this afternoon. But before I introduce to you our next speaker, let us first... Uh, okay, so we will end this session. There will be a separate uh, link uh, later for the next topic. So we will be having a break for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes. So we will be back. Stay tuned.